Right, let's get to it. Military High Command issues warning to residents of Michelle Camp and surrounding communities not to touch any missile or foreign material they find. Now, the warning comes after what the command says is a serious explosion at its armory of the 1st Infantry Battalion military base in the early hours of this morning. Now, residents had to run for their lives as multiple explosions caused missiles to fly long distances and, in some cases, hit civilian homes. Some residents of Kakasunanka, uh, number one, a nearby community, have handed over pieces of metal believed to be parts of missiles that hit their homes. Now, at least three homes were hit and partially destroyed in the explosion. Assemblyman for the area, Anthony Nukwenu, uh, gave the parts out to Chief Commanding Officer of Michel Camp Barracks, Lieutenant Colonel Asari. Is this the first time this is happening here? Well, the, this very devastation is the first time, but uh, fire has uh, ever gutted the Amri some years back, I think, either 89 or 1990, somewhere like that. But that came in the afternoon, but this came in the night, and this is the first time we've experienced explosives that strike into the community and even affected some part of people's residence. So this is the first time we've uh, come across this highly devastating situation. Okay. Can you tell me your personal experience of what happened at dawn? Well, uh, where were you? We, we were in bed okay. when we heard noise okay. coming from all over. We heard people shouting, so we all came out and we saw that there were flames. Okay. So some of us who grew here knew definitely to be the armory. And when we came out, we heard the explosives coming, and it was really devastating. Everybody was just writing for his or her life, and it was really scary. Okay. And I believe, if it's not by the grace of God, I don't think today you see people standing here. Uh, there were other explosives. If the fire had gutted those buildings, then I think the whole community would have been wiped out, even within the, uh, uh, the Michel Camp itself. Uh, and I believe maybe there will have been mass barrier uh, in Ghana, which that counts some of the uh, military men who were at post gave. All of them ran for their life. None of them stood at the uh, premises until experts who are uh, armory experts came around to manage to get in and try to do some disconnection before even the fire service could even go in. But well, the fire service was even stopped not to get close. So it's not something that was really a uh, friendly uh, situation at all. I've been to two structures, one room behind you and another a kiosk here that have been hit by uh, rockets, if I should call it, because that's what I heard one of the soldiers call it. Were you, did you hear the impact at the time and what was your reaction? Did you see the kind of missile it was? Yeah, I've seen the, the metal. Uh, we all heard and we saw metal flying. Uh, one fell here, one at that building. And then one also at the entrance to the community. Others, we didn't know where they really went to. So uh, it was really an intervention of God because what really struck, the gentleman just moved out of his room and the metal landed at the place, according to his. So he just moved out of his room and then he heard the sound. And when he went there, he saw the metal lying just by his gate. So I believe. Uh, I, by saw, the intervention of I saw the military around trying to retrieve the metal. Do yeah. we know where it is? It is? Yeah, I've called the gentleman uh, to come and get it for us. He to, has it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we, we kept it so that... Why did you have to keep oh, it? No, uh, Why would say you would be afraid that it could explode? Anything else no, could happen? it was uh, something that has already uh, finished uh, doing its work. You think so? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, so... How do you know? How were you able to tell? Tell us. Oh, but if something is... Uh, really uh, having a use again, you see, because this is something that you see that everything is always it's only the metal that was there. So we kept it that this morning, we'll go and hand over to them. But he just went somewhere, so he's coming back and we'll pick it and give it to them. Okay. Is there anything you are asking to be done about this situation? You may never know what would happen tomorrow. Well, we've all talked about relocation of highly explosive metals mm. from the armory. Mm. Uh, since development has catch up with the armory, you can't talk about relocating the multitudes that have settled here. Mm. 
because it's not only this community. People around the Sebrepo, uh, Saki, Bediakun, and the new Sebrepo, all over. When this armory was uh, put up, the, there were people settling here, but they were predominantly peasant farmers and cattle rarers. But today, look at the development that have come up. And I believe the best is to relocate the highly explosive metals in the yard to area that we don't have uh, settlement, so that government can take steps to protect the boundary of that armory than to talk about demolishing settlements here. That will not be an ideal situation. So I believe this has affirmed our call for all these years that government needs to do something about this armory. And I believe maybe it's God's intervention for government to hear the cry of the people who have settled here and are living here. A resident of the Kakasunanka community not too far from Michelle Camp. But what really happened? Some of the residents have been recounting what they heard and saw at the time of the incident at dawn. I just heard uh, our buildings vibrating. So my mom came out of her room and she was telling me, did you hear the sound? I said, yes, mommy. I know what is this? And she said, no, they are alerting us to come out of our rooms and stay outside because there was a fire outbreak in the camp. So we were just seeing the whole thing as if we were dreaming. We couldn't understand. So we have to stay outside for hours at the mercy of mosquitoes. So it was very terrific. But we thank God God has delivered us. But we pray that something to be done immediately because if it should happen the next time and and we, i don't even know how to explain it we, we we i just can't explain my dear i can't explain it's 12 30 i was praying then i just heard the blast then i heard one soldier came out from the place shouting call fire service call fire service fire 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 so i also went and woke up my husband and called my daughter that there's something going on here so he should call fire service then he also died for our service, said, oh, there's something going, going on here. So she said, oh, they responded that they are coming. But my concern is that this big place. So after I came to interview one of the soldiers, because when it happened, they ran to our place. They said, this place is a, bit, a little safer. So I was asking them that, so this big place, formerly there was a fire tender here, a car here always. But nowadays we don't see the car. He told me the car is, uh, is not working anymore. Then I was asking, them, how can this big place uh, without a fire tender, which is very dangerous? That's my concern. If there were to be a fire tender here and it happened, you know, they could have controlled the fire. But because there was nothing like that, you know, you know if not because of the grace of God, we could have died. Now, 93-year-old Janet O'Day says that she fell over several times upon hearing the explosion. She tells Joy News her knees and shoulders are hurting because her children had to drag her on the ground to safety. Okay, so so now grandma is getting a bit emotional you can understand she's 93 years old so while all of this has been happening she's been falling down all the time she tells me one of her children in Bishley actually called her to check on her whether she's okay and before they realize another explosion again they actually heard noise that somebody's house had been hit by a rocket and that's also prompted another running and in the course he fell down again all she could realize was that everybody was pulling her left and right 
with the hope to take her to safety. That's why she's crying. She says her knees are hurting her because she was dragged. They dragged her on the floor just so nothing will happen to her. But later she managed to speak to her daughter to assure her that she was fine and that she's okay. Nothing actually happened to her. That's the story here. Grandma Janet is 93. She's at Kakasunanka number one, which is just about um, 20, 20 meters away from the military base where the explosion happened. Just across the street, they went to cross the road. Her house is about two compounds away and she's sitting here in the morning after the incident trying to just... So, this is the head of the, tip of the rocket that ran through and penetrated the kiosk at Kakanu Sunanka number one. The structure, one of the structures that was hit during the explosion. It is a very heavy metal, very, very, very heavy, very heavy. The tip is very sharp. I can imagine if this thing hits a human being, what would happen? So this is what has been left around. Um, the main metal, the main weapon has been given to the military a few minutes ago. And this one, another resident apparently found it and kept it in his car. So he just gave it to us. You can have a good look at it. This is how it looks like. It's very, very heavy. Very, very he heavy. And it's the tip, it's the head of the rocket that hit one of the kiosks, which is just somewhere behind us here. I would have you look at quickly. This is it. This is it. So this is what hits. If you come back, you see. This is what hits the kiosk. If you come back, you see. This is what hits the kiosk. It actually went through the roof, roof and I came through the side of the kiosk. Mm. Now, the Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Obed Aqua, who visited the military base after the incident, said the situation is under control and a major investigation is underway into the incident. Early hours of today, one of the storehouses in the base ammunition depot went up or had an explosion. Through the intervention of the commander rear and the CEO of the base workshop, the issue was resolved immediately. In other words, fire tenders were brought in within 15 to 20 minutes of its occurrence. The fire was brought under control. Actions were taken to ensure that other storehouses containing high explosives were isolated from the main incident spot. As of now, everything is under control. There is no threat to the people living within this settlement. The minister, myself, the chief of the army staff and other accompanying staff have gone around the incident scene. The destruction is serious, but we don't expect any escalation of the situation. There is one thing that we want to ask the public to note, that those who live within this community if they should come across any foreign object, they should not touch it. They should not touch it. If you find any missile, anything that is foreign within your community, don't touch it. Just make a report to Michelle Camp, the commanding officer, and experts from BAD will go examine it and uh, defuse it. So that is a very major appeal we want to make. But the assurance is that everything is under control. A major investigation is going to be conducted into this incident. And that is going to be immediate. And within the next couple of weeks, we shall come out with our findings. And any measures that we need to take to prevent its occurrence. Let's learn some more. Now, Joy News' Latif Idris has been speaking with the Public Affairs Director of the Ghana Armed Forces, Colonel Agri Kwashi, for more on this matter. Oh, for now, it's when they finish with the investigation that we'll be able to know. But I can tell you that the building 
that house, those uh, items, the building is totally damaged. You are talking about the state of the armory? Yeah, yeah. No, the armory is intact, but the workshop where those things that got bent. And fortunately, it didn't affect any of the warehouses that contain the ammunition. They are all intact. And the story would have been different. Mm. Yes, it's, it's a, a workshop where we have, or we had some pyrotechnics and some dummy ammunition with the use for training. All those things were there. Those explosions were, came from the pyrotechnics. You know, when any time we are doing fireworks, those things that we blow for the displays, mm -hmm. yes, those things were there. So once they came into contact with fire, you get those explosions. And yes. So, so what are we looking at now? Are we looking at evicting the people or relocating the armory and also the workshop? Uh, as for the workshop, it's some it's a facility within the yard that is needed because you train people and that is where you train, where you keep some of those things. And so that facility would definitely have to be rebuilt. But relocating the facility or relocating the people, it's a very different issue altogether. These are major decisions that need to be taken by uh, not even only the military hierarchy alone, but the government itself, because relocating that thing is not a simple thing. But my worry is that it doesn't matter where you send it. People will go closer to the place, because today when you go to the Bondasi training camp, it used to be very far in the bush, but people are now living close to the place. That, that place to be fire live rounds. And so next time you want to fire, you have to go around warning the villagers. Well, when we started using the facility, it was complete bush. We didn't worry too much about some of these things. So these are but some of the things. we can prevent some of these things, can't yes, we? Yes, the prevention is to make sure that the safety uh, regime within the facility is up to scratch. That, that is the question I'm going at. Are there standards, I mean, international and maybe within our jurisdiction, are there standards that says that the proximity is, say, 10 kilometers so that no, I mean, residential building is supposed to be 10 kilometers away from an armory. Are there standards uh, and are we complying? You always want to look at the type of ammunition that you have in that armory. What is the liter area? Mm. You see, the maximum effective range of what you have there. Mm. That will tell you the distance from which people should be and so if you have things that the maximum effective range is 100 meters then you can put people 100 meters but if you have something that can travel as far as 25 kilometers that should tell you that people should leave that distance away from the place and some of the bombs go far so it's not only the question of how close or how far the person is from the place because somebody could be living in Tema town, and if it had affected a store, that house, such explosive, the thing could have traveled to that place. Yeah. Yes, and so the most important thing is to be sure that the safety measures are up to scratch so that we don't even record things of that nature. But as much as possible, people who are living around the place and don't have permits should start advising themselves. Is, is the place a, the place is a security zone. So why then did we allow civilians to encroach? I think this is a different issue altogether. Maybe at another time we can talk about some of these things. But the same people will come and say maybe government are not acquired a thing properly. These things are old facilities. The barracks were built in the 60s. And so people come, land owners, clans come and they have their own issues. So it's a different issue altogether. And but, but it affects your outfit? Yes, it affects us because we know the dangers. Sometimes we were having problems with some communities close by Mbemba camp, and some media houses were taking us on. It's because of some of these things. Because we have such facilities across our barracks. So people should listen to us when we are telling them that 
is not safe living in this area for their own sake and all of us. Is it enough to just tell them that it's not safe and then go back or you say it and then you act? You have to start saying it mm -hmm. for people to be aware and so that it become necessary for you to move the person, yes. Because you are saying it for the media to also to understand. But they are the very same people who will be waiting for their phonies. And I don't want to recount some of the experiences that I've had with some media houses and some journalists that we do things without human touch and that sort of thing. Well, you want to insist that certain things should be done. The same media will take you on. When something goes by, the same media will come back and tell them, ah, but you knew this thing was like this, so why didn't you insist on this? So maybe the media should help us in educating the people, conscientizing them that, look, these places, they are too close for comfort. And so maybe when the media join the crusade, we'll be able to help the people themselves to appreciate that, look, it's not too safe living in areas like this. So what form will the investigations take? So the people who are doing the, the fire people will be there, the ammo people will be there. So I'm not one of them, so I can't actually prescribe how the investigations are going to be done. And you can say it's commenced already? Uh, once the military police have been there to see cordon off the place, mm. it means that they, they've put something in motion. When I was leaving the base, there were military police people there, uh, and then they know what they are looking for. So do you suspect any criminal intent in this? For now, there shouldn't be any, uh, what is it, how do I uh, put it? We shouldn't impute any motive to anybody. We should allow the investigators to do their work. And then whatever they bring out, you have an open mind to see whatever they bring. Yes. Uh, and how soon should we expect this? team that is investigating to finish its work and present I mean the findings uh, as that, soon as yeah. as soon as possible because in as much as we are in a hurry for them to finish they should also take their time to make sure that a thorough job is done and so you as soon put as know, timelines I think it's not too advisable I don't know, you're putting pressure on them they should do a thorough job so that if there's something that has to be than to correct whatever lapses, then the proper things are done. So I, I get the sense that you cannot tell us the cost of the, I mean, dummy weapons that have been destroyed. You cannot put... No, no I, I don't have any figures because for now I don't even know the quantity of items that were in that building. It's when they do the investigations, all these things will come up because there will be inventory of whatever is inside. That will help us to know maybe quantity six of item B, quantity two, that sort of thing. And then we will know the cost of those things. Then when you put them together, then you'll be able to know how much damage.